Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Taku. In this video, I'll be analyzing the Dashcat 10. So let us first get started with the verbal analysis. The verbal section was definitely on the easier side, especially I think all the four reading comprehensions were uh, easily readable. Even the questions, I think there were very few questions which involved a lot of inference based uh, reasoning. There were some questions which involved inference based reasoning, but uh, not as many as can be expected. So if you're looking at the four RCs, the first RC, normally when I uh, solve a verbal section, I try to go through all the four RCs and make a priority order in which uh, I want to attempt them. So when I looked at all the four RCs, the first RC was, uh, I think, about free speech. The second one was about, uh, I think, comic books. The third one was uh, about, I think, uh, odor. And the fourth one was about, uh, I think, uh, doctors, female doctors and male doctors. When I looked at the four of them, I first attempted the fourth uh, RC which was about uh, doctors and I found the questions to be definitely on the easier side. I was, uh, I thought the passage was also easy to read. I was not very confused with the passage and I was able to attempt them. Even the questions I was able to attempt uh, without too much difficulty. Towards the end, I think uh, the third and the fourth question in this particular RC were slightly tricky, but uh, still not uh, very, very difficult. So overall, I would be very happy if this kind of an RC comes in the examination because this is not a very difficult RC. Second, I attempted the first RC which is basically about free speech and about telegram. Now, this was an RC, again, I felt which was easy to read. It was not difficult to read. It was about uh, the current affairs, whatever was happening in the world right now. So I was able to concentrate better. I had no issues. With respect to even the inference based, I don't think uh, there were any inference based questions in this. There was one inference based question, which is what is this, which the author would agree with most with, but it was a fairly simple, straightforward uh, inference based question. So again, this was an RC that should be definitely scoring. So I think this RC and this RC were the first two RCs I attempted. Both of them I felt were definitely on the easier side. The third RC I attempted was the comic book one. Here I thought this will be an easy uh, RC because it was about comic books and I felt how difficult can it be. But uh, to be really honest, I found this to be slightly on the trickier side. When I started uh, reading it only, I realized after the first paragraph that it was not as simple as I thought it would be. The other two RCs that I read uh, till that time, I found were much easier to read. But this RC, I definitely struggled. So I found that uh, this was an RC, which was actually a little difficult to read because again, I knew the kind of questions that would come. In this RC, I could see the subtleties that were there, where there will also be a lot of inference based questions because there were four paragraphs. Initially, they were essentially saying uh, about comic books and propaganda and how that is used. And towards then, they were essentially saying that uh, the war has ended, so propaganda stopped, but where comic books went ahead uh, later. Now, when I was reading the RC also, I could see that there were uh, many subtleties about what was actually influencing what. So, I found it definitely difficult to read on a uh, deep level. Uh, the, uh, on the surface, I think I was able to understand whatever was happening, but trying to get exactly what was the cause and what was the effect, uh, I was uh, definitely struggling at the start. So, I had to read it, I think, twice to really get a handle. Still, I didn't do well in this uh, set. They were, I think... Uh, I think there were three RC questions in this and I got all three of them wrong because like I said, this was an RC which has a lot of layers. So the first layer of what exactly the author was saying can be easily understood. But even when you are reading, you can figure out that it is not as easy in the sense that there were uh, multiple things. There was the government that was trying to influence the comic books and comic books was trying to influence the readers. So there were uh, many things that were happening in this. So it was definitely a difficult RC to read as well as the questions were difficult. So this I found was a definitely a difficult RC. Uh, and after that, I went and attempted the verbal questions. I'll come to the verbal questions later. The final RC that I attempted in the towards the end was about this odor, uh, smell and odor. Initially, when I looked at the four RCs, I thought this was the most difficult RC. And to be really honest, this is not a very easy RC. To read, I didn't uh, find this RC to be very easy. But because I had a lot of time towards the end, I was able to read it two, three times to get a good handle about what the author was actually saying. And because of that, I think I was able to get uh, most of the questions correct. But again, these two, I think, were RCs, which were definitely on the trickier side. They were not very easy RCs. Especially this RC was much more difficult because even the questions were very difficult. Here, the third RC, I think, uh, was difficult to read. But on the other hand, the questions, I think, were not very, very difficult. Uh, because I think, again, there were, uh, I think there was only one inference-based question in this. But otherwise, it was not a very difficult RC from the standpoint of questions. This is as far as RCs are concerned. Again, I would be very happy if this kind of an RC or this set of RCs actually come in the examination because at least there are two RCs which are definitely scorable, which is the first one and the fourth one. Now, let us look at the verbal questions. Before I took the verbal section, I wanted to, uh, I was very motivated. I was telling myself that I had to do well uh, 
because normally I tend to do well in RCS, but I don't do well in uh, verbal questions. So this time when I was actually attempting the verbal questions, I was more motivated and I was putting in more uh, effort even mentally. Uh, I think probably because of that or otherwise I did quite well this time. The para summary questions, I think there were two para summary questions. One of them I was able to get correct and one I was uh, I did not get correct. But I found both of the para summaries to be definitely uh, not very difficult. I think the second para summary which I got uh, wrong was definitely tricky because the options had very little uh, to do with what was given in the uh, passage. Uh, people who have taken this mock will understand what exactly I am saying. Where I felt that there were any two options can be correct, but uh, I got one of them wrong. But at least the first para summary I think was definitely on the easier side. The one with respect to uh, California and the homes, I think that was definitely a para summary that you should get correct. Coming to para jumbles, normally I get uh, para jumbles wrong. But here I was able to get both the para jumbles correct. So this would essentially imply that para jumbles was definitely on the uh, not very difficult side. I think here we put it as medium and hard. But I felt uh, it was definitely on the easy to medium side. But I think looking at how the people have felt, how the students have felt, we tagged it as medium hard. But I personally felt the para jumbles can be definitely answered because I was able to get the interlinkages quite easily. The next one was out of context. Out of context, uh, normally I don't do well and I found the out of context also to be definitely on the trickier side. Uh, especially there was uh, one with respect to mice and rats that I found was uh, definitely not very easy. So that uh, out of context, I think this was definitely trickier and para, para insertion I think was definitely on the easy side. If you look at the dash cats, I think the last uh, few dash cats, we were trying to put some tricky questions in para insertions. Over here, again, I think para insertions is an easy topic, which is also reflected in the questions that were given. It is back to normal, where uh, most of the people were able to get the both the para insertion questions correct. Now, coming to the expected marks and the expected percentile. In my opinion, if you score around 36 marks in this, you will be getting 9 percentile. It is not a difficult uh, verbal section by any means, especially the RCs. I think there were one or two RCs which are definitely doable. Similarly, even in the verbal questions, there were definitely some verbal questions which are easy. Like the para insertion ones, I think were definitely easy. Students who are not uh, nervous, I think can get at least some questions correct in the para summaries as well as the para jumbles. So this is not a very difficult uh, mock. This is definitely not a very easy mock also because there were two arches which are difficult. But overall, I would put this as the easy to medium uh, level difficulty section. And the 9 percentile mark would be around uh, 36 marks. Now let us look at the LIDA section. In the LIDA section, there were four sets. I think three sets were solvable. One was a very difficult set. I think that was a set that should not be uh, attempted. The selection with conditions set, which is the first set, I think should be a set that should be avoided. There are multiple reasons for it. In general, selection with conditions is a set I avoid because every question in that will be individual question or mostly it will be individual question. So it is not probably a set which you can solve completely. Uh, there are some kind of sets where when you are given the information, you solve it. You have solved the entire set and then you can go ahead and answer all the questions in one go. Selection with condition kind of uh, sets involve you to solve questions individually. So even if you understand whatever is given in the information, whatever is given in the question, you solve it, there will be multiple cases that are possible. And in every question, you are given one extra piece of information and you have to select which of the cases valid and then solve it individually. Those are time consuming. Those also, even if you solve, uh, you will not be confident because there are, you are susceptible to making a lot of silly mistakes. So that was a question that I avoided when I looked at the four LIDA sets. Uh, I wanted to solve this one, this one and this one. The quant based LR set was a very interesting set. Uh, it was not a difficult set and I think that is the set that people should uh, answer first. Uh, it was not very difficult. You have to understand uh, some uh, values. Basically, I think it involves uh, anybody who solves Sudoku's will have a slight edge. If you understand basic probabilities, you will have a slight edge. But once you get it, uh, I think you will be able to solve the entire uh, set. It involves uh, maybe uh, solving some uh, values which are missing in a table also and once you solve the set you will be able to get all the five questions correct this set i think can be answered in 15 to 18 minutes if you are having a good day if you are not missing out on any values any information you will get this correct in 15 minutes if you are having uh, if you are missing out on some of the important clues or tricky clues you should definitely get it correct in 18 to 20 minutes this is the case for somebody who is looking to do well somebody who is aiming to score 90 percentile in lrda i think this is a set that they will answer in 15 to 20 minutes the second set which i think can be solved is the scheduling set the only difficulty is this is slightly more trickier as compared to the quant based LR because to solve this set, you will have to uh, get three or four ideas correct. Even if you miss out on one of the idea, you will not get the entire set correct, which is actually what happened to me. I was able to solve most of the set, but one crucial piece uh, of idea was missing where I was not able to, that idea was not striking me because of which I was not able to solve the entire set. 
but uh, it was basically in three parts i was able to get two parts and the third part i was uh, not able to solve also i was running out of time so i also got a little nervous but again somebody who is having a calm mind is not very nervous should definitely get it uh, solve this set in 20 minutes although like i mentioned this is a slightly more tricky set as compared to the quant based lr set but still this is soluble the third one was venn diagrams many people got this wrong but this is basically a four parameter venn diagram uh, kind of a set the thing is unfortunately if you look at it you won't uh, feel that this is a four parameter venn diagram that felt like a more difficult uh, question because of which even i did not attempt it in my attempt in my mock attempt but uh, when i attempted it later i realized that this is basically a four parameter venn diagram uh, set which is a fairly straightforward one which many people should know how to solve so if you don't know how to solve it know how to represent a four parameter venn diagram we have made many videos on it you should definitely check it out so four parameter venn diagram if you know how to represent the data you will be able to get this question correct this is as far as the section goes now overall my thoughts on the section is that there are three sets now three of them are definitely soluble if you are having a good day if you are somebody who is aiming to be 99 percentile i think can get two sets correct two sets i think if you are having some luck also i think getting two sets correct is possible solving more than two sets in this section i think is very difficult i don't think anybody can actually do it uh, but three out of the three sets i think two sets can be solved the first set which is this selection with conditions i think is a set that should be avoided now let us look at the quant section uh, quant section i think was definitely on the interesting side because uh, i normally say that arithmetic is a very easy section and it is difficult to set difficult questions but over here in some parts of arithmetic like in time one work and time speed and distance we tried to set some difficult questions and i think some of the students found it difficult let us look at the topic wise distribution i think there were three questions in uh, ratio and proportion I think uh, the one with respect to moon and uh, earth I think was easy but some people can uh, find it uh, like confusing but overall I don't think it was difficult. The second one was uh, with respect to the average marks where uh, there are students five sections and uh, average marks minimum average marks I think that was an easy question that should be solved. The third one was a slightly tricky one which involves uh, there are two classes uh, total of 160 students some boys some girls and some ratios given uh, slightly tricky uh, maybe slightly lengthy but should be answered. So overall, I think the ratios and averages and percentages was on the easy to medium side. It was not trivial. Some of the questions, like I mentioned, one of the questions might be tricky, but overall it is not a difficult topic. The next one was with respect to time, distance and work and time and uh, speed. We combined both of them. Here, I think there were uh, definitely at least two questions which are on the difficult side. One involved uh, like two people going upstream and downstream. That I think was a difficult question. Uh, there was another question about going from uh, one place to another place and because of some uh, mal malfunction he starts going slightly slower at one point so that i think these two were the questions which were difficult there were two questions which are definitely soluble one involved the manufacturing of a shirt and the other one uh, was with respect to three groups of people some men some women i think both of those questions should be solved but the first two questions that i mentioned were definitely on the trickier side with respect to the next one which involved profit and loss i think profit loss and interest the questions that were given were not difficult but they were lengthy so they will definitely consume time even if you are using a calculator i think it will take you time so in that aspect this was definitely not a very simple topic as far as this section goes so profit loss and interest there was one question with respect to uh, five years annuality i think it's a lengthy question so probably if you haven't solved it there is nothing wrong with that because even if you are solving it with respect uh, with a calculator it is definitely going to take you at least three minutes so probably it is not worth it uh, there was one question with respect to I think profit x percent profit y percent uh, x percent discount all of that definitely soluble that is an easy question that should be solved. Uh, I think there were two such questions both of them I think should be solved with respect to x percent discount and x percent profit and all. The next one was with respect to quadratic equations the linear equations question was very easy but the quadratic equation question was definitely difficult. So if you have left the quadratic equation question where there are two quadratic equations given and there is some. Uh, information that is given with respect to the relationship between roots i think that is a question that is definitely tricky uh, that is in my opinion a hard question so even if you are leaving the quadratic equations questions that is fine but the linear equation question was very simple very straightforward that should definitely be answered this involved i think a piece of cloth and some people were getting some discount some handkerchief discount and all that should definitely be answered the next one was with respect to inequalities uh, slightly medium level question it is not uh, very easy it is not very difficult especially because the inequality also involves some logarithms many people get uh, very panicky when they see logarithms so if you don't feel panicky and if you are able to uh, solve it it involves some enumeration so I am on the edge with respect to whether you should attempt it or not 
in my opinion, uh, somebody who is aiming to score 95 percentile should be able to solve uh, this question in say 3 minutes or so. So, probably that is what uh, you will have to look at. There is one question which is pure logarithms. That is a very simple question that should be attempted. But again, like I mentioned earlier, many people, uh, this involved like some logarithm of uh, 72 to the base 11 and all. Uh, that is a question that should be answered. It is a simple question, but people find logarithms difficult. They panic and then they ignore simple questions like this. This question is a question that should be solved. There is one more question in progressions. Again, a fairly simple question, but we try to make it look complicated. We try to make it look uh, like slightly threatening. But overall, if you look at it and if you read it, it is a fairly simple question that should also be attempted. So, this logarithm and progressions, I found both the questions were definitely on the easy side. You should definitely attempt them. Uh, with respect to geometry, I think some of the questions were easy. There was, I think, one question with respect to direct application of uh, the formula for number of diagonals in a polygon. That should be attempted. There is another question with respect to a very simple question about a right angle triangle and some sides are given. That should be attempted. There is one tricky question where you are basically asked to draw a area and calculate its uh, draw a graph and calculate its area. Many people find it difficult to draw these graphs, so they might be struggling with that question, which is fine. Uh, it is not a, it is not important for you to solve all the questions, but that is a slightly medium level uh, question. So if you don't attempt it, that is fine. There is one more question with respect to a circle and an equilateral triangle. Again, a slightly tricky question. You should know some of the formulas and some of the ideas should strike you, then you will get it question, uh, correct. So, even if you are not able to answer it, that should be fine. Overall geometry, I would say there is no question which is very difficult. Uh, there are two questions which are easy, but there are two questions which are on the medium level, medium to hard level difficulty. The next one is with respect to number systems and probability. I think there were three questions, one question in number systems and two questions in uh, permutations combinations. I think all three of them are on the difficult side. The number systems question, the problem is that it is a theta question. So, for you to actually make an informed guess also is slightly difficult. But you can think about it and make an informed guess. Even if you are not able to solve it or get the idea, I think based on the way the question is actually framed, if you plan properly and solve it, uh, at least for what to put as the theta answer, uh, people who have solved it will understand what exactly I am saying. Based on the information that is given, if you have to make one guess about what the answer will be, and if you think about it in a smart way, you will be able to get it correct. This is with respect to the number systems question, which involved uh, some divisors, the sum of divisors, all of those. That I think is not a difficult question, but it is a tricky question. Uh, it is not a question that you will immediately feel, okay, this is an easy question, I will get it correct. But if you, even if you do not get it correct, you have to think uh, strategically about what you should put as the theta answer. There are two questions in permutation combinations. I think both of them are on the difficult side. Uh, I think many people actually struggled also with respect to that and I can understand why. They are not easy questions. Uh, they seem easy, but they are definitely difficult. So, both the permutations, combinations questions, I would actually categorize them as hard. Even if you ignore them, I think that is fine. Overall, I would say that uh, there are some questions which are definitely easy and there are some questions which are definitely difficult. Like the thing that we try to do in this mock is, we try to give easy questions from so-called difficult topics like logarithms, like inequalities. We try to give questions which are on the easy side. Because we want to push students to know the basics of all the topics. Similarly, from even in the so-called easy topics, we try to set difficult questions. Like in arithmetic, like in time and work and time and distance. Even though they are simple uh, concepts, simple topics, we try to set questions which are on the difficult side. So, that is what we try to do with uh, this dash cat. Overall, I think if you have to look at the percentile, 99 percentile, I think in quant would be approximately 33 marks. If you look at the overall score, I think overall 99 percentile will be around 82 marks. 95 percentile will be 60 marks and 80 percentile will be 45 marks in this mock.